Here's our BDA taco. We got our soup broth right here, or consomme, and you dip that in there. Mmm. My God. What's up guys? Long time no see. Welcome back to another one of our vlogs. Say hello to Pancake right here. And say hello to my Nati Camote. <laughs> I always come up with different nicknames for Angelique, it's so funny. But anyway guys, so Today, we are going to cook something a little different. We usually cook Filipino food, but um, we've been getting a lot of people asking us to try something a little different. So, um, <laughs> so we are going to cook Mexican food. Uh, Angelique has been asking for it because she's been watching these YouTube videos of something that's trending right now. It's the Bidia tacos. The Bidia tacos are like trending all over online right now. So. Um, it's something that I grew up eating. Uh, it's something that Mexicans usually cook uh, for big occasions like weddings, baptisms, large birthdays, quinceañeras. Uh, so it's something uh, that has always been a staple in uh, Mexican uh, tradition, but it seems like recently it just became very popular. So today we are going to cook bidia guys, bidia tacos. So. Let me show you what we have here. Um, I got our cilantro. Um, I have a bunch of garlic. People usually put less garlic. I like a lot of garlic inside of it. We got four tomatoes. And this is my little um, secret ingredient that I add to it. Well, it's not secret anymore. I just add a little piece of ginger inside my bidia. And right here, we have all of our spices. So in here, we have uh, thyme, uh, majorum, uh, Mexican oregano, Mexican uh, cinnamon stick. This is important, you have to have Mexican cinnamon stick. We have bay leaves. I'm gonna put about five bay leaves, uh, four cloves, and then I also have um, uh, cumin seeds. So cumin seeds inside there. So these are all our spices right here. Um, right here in a pan, what I'm gonna be doing is I got a pan uh, with some oil in it, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the tomatoes, the onions inside there, and we're gonna saute it with the garlic and all that good stuff and the spices, and then we're gonna blend it. Here, I got a pot of water ready to boil. And over here, we have a big chuck roast and two big shanks. So um, we're gonna make our bidia out of this. It's gonna be a slow roasted stew. And then in here, this is the key ingredient, the key, the key component to our bidia. Um, we uh, are putting uh, guajillo, uh, dried Mexican chili, New Mexico, chile de arbol, that's a little, a little bit of a spicier one, and uh, uh, pasilla. So these are all, they're not, the chile de arbol is uh, the, the spicy one, but they're generally uh, just a dried chili that's uh, kind of sweet. It's like a sun-dried chili almost. So um, a lot of Mexican dishes and sauces are based with a dried chili. So uh, this is very important for our sauce because it's gonna turn it rich red and uh, make it taste delicious, guys. So with our chilies here, I'm gonna um, go ahead and uh, cover them with water. And what we wanna do is rehydrate them. So we're gonna rehydrate them and get them all nice and soft. And uh, they're gonna about probably double in size. And we're gonna blend these with all of our spices, onions, and tomatoes. Go ahead and put them inside there. Add the spices into that pan and you're, we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna saute them and get them all nice and fragrant. So sauteing the spices inside the pan, what that's gonna do is it's just gonna add 
Um, it's gonna add some uh, uh, fragrance to the spices and bring aromas. out the flavors. Yeah, the aromas are gonna come out and it's gonna bring out all the flavors. So what we'll do for that is, I'm gonna go ahead and add, add a little bit of water to that pan now to get everything meshing together. Oh, sorry. <laughs> go ahead and just saute that around. Okay, so it looks like our water is boiling. What we're gonna do now is grab our meat. One shank, two shank. Got our big chuck roast. And make sure you have to get the meat with the bone on it because the bone is where all the flavor comes from. Just like with anything else, okay? So we got our chuck. Oh my God. I don't know if it's gonna fit in there. Okay, so we got everything in there. Now we're gonna top this. Ooh. All right, so we got that in there. What we're gonna do actually is we are going to add some salt to this. We're gonna add some salt. So once we get everything all incorporated, uh, this meat is gonna cook uh, slowly for probably about two to three hours um, until it's fall off the bone tender. Are you ready, baby, for this? Can't wait, I'm excited. Are you? Mm-hmm, excited to eat. Because <laughs> all these YouTube videos you've been watching, huh? I know, I've been watching it last night. Yeah. Uh. Oh, all the smells of these spices are already starting to come out. All right guys, so we got our chilies, uh, onions, spices, everything is ready to go. And we put it inside the blender. And what we did was we put the beef broth inside the blender with all the spices and chilies to give it some liquid to blend. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna blend it into a red paste. Just last week you called me, the way you're talking is driving me insane. Hello. Just last week you called me, the way you're talking is driving me insane. Hello. Hello. So also what we decided to do is we're gonna cook um, some beans and uh, Mexican rice. So we have uh, some pinto beans right here. We wash these and uh, they're soaking a little bit and then we're gonna go ahead and start these up. All right guys, so um, we got that sauce strained. It's now inside the beef. Um, so you see here, now the broth is all red and that's just from all the chilies and the spices and everything. So. This is gonna kind of just melt together and the flavors are just gonna mingle and um, we're gonna cook this for three hours. So it really, really infuses that really beefy flavor from the bones and the bones and meat become uh, very tender. Or I should say the meat. <laughs> the meat's gonna be all, fall off the bone. So we decided we're gonna do some Mexican rice and beans. So for now we're starting the beans here. We got a little bit of pinto beans that we washed off. You know, everyone kind of does their own little thing when it comes to uh, cooking beans. I like to add a little bit of salt. So I'm gonna add a little bit of salt here. And then um, what I like to add is a little bit of this Mexican chicken bouillon. So I'm gonna add a, some of that to the beans. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add about four garlic cloves Throw those in there. And then add a quarter onion. Whoops. Quarter onion inside there. And um, that's gonna be our beans there. We're gonna get that to a slow simmer. So um, what we wanna do, what we wanna do with our beans is we wanna slowly simmer them and uh, make sure that they don't burst open. Normally what you would do is you would uh, soak these in water overnight. That way, the beans uh, don't burst and break when you're cooking them. So uh, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna cook it at a very low heat and uh, and that should be good. Um, but yeah, wish you guys could smell this right here. It smells so good. It smells so, so good, guys. Like ridiculously good. We got all our beef inside there, all our bones. This stuff is gonna probably smell up the whole neighborhood. Everyone's gonna smell this. We're probably gonna have some people knocking at our door. 
All right, so our rice is has got browned up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop in our liquid. So next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this, uh, it's like a Mexican chicken bouillon. And for three cups of rice, I usually do two and a half big spoons of that. Then I add some black pepper. So we're gonna get this to a rolling boil and we're gonna cover it. Our Mexican rice here is now boiling. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the top on it and we are gonna bring it down to uh, medium low heat. And we're gonna put it on for about 17 minutes. And we're gonna uh, come and check it after that. Make sure it's not burning and maybe we'll have to uh, just like flip it around and uh, recover it for a couple more minutes just depending on the doneness of it. So um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start shredding this here and um, we'll have our meat ready for our tacos and we will refry our beans right there. Angelique is gonna make the beans. She's gonna make the refried beans. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna drop some oil in there, baby. Just uh -huh. throw it in the pan. How much? Uh, that should be good right there. Okay, so we're gonna get that nice and hot. All right, just keep on dropping them in there. All right, so go ahead and get the smasher. And what you're gonna do is just start smashing them in there. And then what you'll do is if it's dry, you can start adding some liquid to make it um, easier to smash. Cause we don't want them to be too dry. You don't use olive oil, obviously. The better way to do it is to use, you could use like pork fat, bacon fat, or you can use uh, lard. Um, but yeah, we're gonna, we don't, we're not gonna do that today. We're just gonna stick with the olive oil. That's good enough. Yeah, so the consistency of the beans is basically up to you. Um, you can make it watery, you can make it uh, thicker. Me personally, I like it in between. I don't like it too thick and I don't like it too watery. I like it just en like just uh, enough uh, of a consistency where you know you can dip things in it and it's not too dry, not too wet. All right, let's take a look at this rice, guys. Let's take a look. Let's see how fluffy it came out. Whoa, look at that. This rice is nice and fluffy. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, we got our broth right here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna dip our tortilla inside there. And then we're gonna get our queso. And we're gonna take some of our media. All right, so we got our uh, media tacos cooking right there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna um, cook them until they get crispy on the outer edges because the oil from the meat is frying basically the tortilla. So, as you can see here, we got our BDA tacos. They're starting to get crispy. If we look on the bottom of there, but we're gonna let them get a little more crispy and then we're gonna flip them over. And they should be ready. The tacos are almost done, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna top them 
with some uh, onions and cilantro. And then we're gonna drop a little bit of juice on there. These tacos are gonna be a little messy, guys, so they're falling apart. It's all right. Look at that, guys. <laughs> oh my god. Alright. So, here's our BDA taco. We got our soup broth right here, or consomme. And you dip that in there. Mmm. My God. Mm. Mm. The beef in this is so tender and so cheesy. Wow. You just dip that in there like that. Oh my god. Mm. Dang, it's so good. So we topped our beans with queso fresco. And... We got rice. That's mm. tasty. Mm. It's very good, baby. Well done. Man. These things are super easy to make, actually. Mm. I don't think it's easy. <laughs> Actually, you're right. Yeah, there's lots of like steps to do it. It's easy to see why these things are so popular now. Hmm. I think I think it was like a food truck in Los Angeles that made these really popular. But the original birria is a lamb. Mm-hmm. Mm. Well, actually original birria is cooked with goat or lamb, but a lot of people just make it with beef because beef is easier to find. Take a bite of the taco. It's messy though. Mm -hmm. I'm eating it. Take a bite of the taco and take a sip of the juice there. Those were some good tacos, guys. What'd you think, baby? Mm. Good stuff? <laughs> I 
on the beach. My God. It's actually my first time making this, the tacos like this, but I've made media before. Mm. But really anything in a taco is amazing. So you can't go wrong. This is my favorite taco so far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, so there's a lot of preparation into making this, but if you follow step by step and just be patient, it's worth it for sure. Because I mean, this just, just the soup right here, it's all the flavors in the soup, all the spices and the beef, when you slow cook it, when you slow cook it, the beef just like infuses into that broth. So every sip that you get of that broth, you taste all those spices, the chilies, garlic, but most importantly, the beef. The beef is so strong in it. Uh, it's like a, I would compare it to the beefiness that you would get in like in a bulalo or something like that. It's really beefy. Mm. So guys, that's how you make BDI tacos. Follow each recipe, guys. You'll never regret it. <laughs> <laughs> um, give us, give us a try. Let us know how it came out. Uh, if you guys have any more suggestions on what we should try next, we're thinking about chicken mole. Um, let us know. Give us a shout out. Uh, let us know in the comments down below what you would do better, or if my BDI recipe sucked, or <laughs> if you have no. any suggestions. Let us know. Follow us on Instagram and uh, we'll, get, we'll see you guys next time, okay? Peace.